A structure is a system of connected parts used to support a load or combination of loads. An important examples related to civil engineering may include bridges, towers, buildings, roads, etc. Hey, my name is Isil Khan and in this short video, I'm going to introduce different types of structures with their functions related to civil engineering and technology such as beams, columns, tie rods, trusses, arches and cables, surface structures, frames, etc. First of all, let's talk about beams. So what is beam and how many types does it have? Well, beams are commonly horizontal and straight members to carry vertical loads. These types of members are designed and built to resist bending moment. However, Sometimes when span is short and carry heavy load, then the internal shear force can become enough large and this shear force can change the design. When a beam is supported on ends which are free to rotate and having no moment reaction or in short terms when a beam has only vertical reactions it supports is known by simple supported beam or you can say simply supported beam. These types of beams are also known by determinate beams because they can be analyzed by using only equilibrium equations. Sometimes beam is fixed at both ends which is known by fixed beam. This type of beam can be indeterminate because it has moment and force reactions it supports. This type of beam has no rotation like simply supported beam. A beam fixed at one end and projecting into space is called by continuer beam. These types of beams are determinate because they can have reaction only at fixed support which are two just moment and vertical reaction of course. Sometimes one or both ends of the beam are extended behind its supports. Because of this extension, the beam is known by an overhanging beam. This type of beam and a continuous beam can have point of contact flexure where bending moment changes its sign. A continuous beam has more than two points of supports along its length which means this beam has more than one span. The end span of continuous beam can be cantilever. They can be peg supported or may also be freely supported. These are indeterminate beams which cannot be fully analyzed by using only equilibrium equations. Sometimes beam cross section is kept various along its length. Such a beam is known by tapered beam. So this was about beam and its types. Now let's come into columns. Columns are normally vertical members which resist axial compressive loads. Columns are subjected to both axial loads and bending moment as well of course. Columns are classified into two types, long columns and short columns. Short column is dead when the ratio of its effective length to its least dimension becomes less or equal to 12. Short columns normally fails by uh, crushing of course you can say. Buckling tendency of short column is low with respect to long columns. Short columns carries more load compared to long column having same sectional area. Similarly, long column is dead when the ratio of its effective length to its least dimension becomes greater than 12. Long column fails by buckling of course. There may not be crushing there. Buckling tendency of long column is of course higher with respect to short columns. Loading capacity of long column is less compared to short columns of the same sectional area. And then comes tie rods. These are members subjected to tensile force. These members are slender and often chosen from rods, bars, angles or channels you can say. And trusses consist of slender elements arranged in triangular fashion. You may have seen in bridges of course 
when the span of a structure is required to be large and when it uh, depth is not an important factor for a design a truss may be selected to be designed most often it is economically feasible to use a truss to cover spans ranging from 10 meter to 125 meters there may be two types of trusses planar trusses and space trusses planar trusses are composed of members that lay in the same plane and uh, are frequently used by roofs, supports, and bridges, where space trusses have members extending in three dimensions and are suitable for towers, of course. Now let's talk about arches and cables. Cables are usually flexible and carry their load and tension. Cables are commonly used to support buildings, roofs, and bridges. Cables has mirrors where the beam and truss, especially for spans that are greater than 150 feet or 46 meters, because they are always in tension and will not become unstable and suddenly collapse, which can happen with beam and truss, of course. Cables use is limited only by their seg, weight, and method of anchorage. The arch is a member in curved fashion, you may have seen of course, which achieves its strength in compression. Since it has a reverse curvature to date of the cable, the arch must be rigid, however, in order to maintain its shape and uh, this results in secondary loading involving shear and moment, which must be considered in its design of course. Arches are mostly used in dooms, roofs, bridge structures, and for opening and masonry walls. And going ahead for frames, frames are a combination of beams and columns that may be fixed or pen uh, connected, you could say. The loading on a frame uh, causes bending of its members and uh, if uh, it has rigid joints connections uh, this structure is then indeterminate from a standpoint of analysis the force analysis can be done by stiffness method and equilibrium equations a surface structure is made from a material having a very small thickness compared to its other dimensions the materials of surface structures are sometimes very flexible and can take the form of a tent. Surface structures can also be made of rigid materials such as the reinforced concrete because they may be shaped as folded plates, slenders or hyperbolic or shells. These structures act like arches since they support loads and tension or compression with very little bending and air set so these are a few structures you should know if you are an engineering student thank you dears for watching see you next time